on It Is More Good News Wednesday, already starting off with more good news. Big shout out to everyone and the good news that they're having. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Let's get the questions rolling here. We got some great guests coming on today. We're going to learn a lot of things. Jesse, good to see you. Welcome, everybody. You can always reach out to me for any help. Chef Marshall O'Brien in the house. Keaton, good to see you. Jonathan Busby in the house. Good to hear you, Jake, and good to hear you hearing me on more good news Wednesday. Go ahead, put in any good news that you've heard already today as we look uh, there. Thank you, Nick, Mr. Positive. Uh, if anybody wants my ebook, my audio book, or a signed copy of my book, all you got to do is email me, david at dmeltzer.com. David at dmeltzer.com. I will sign a book, send it to you, ship it to you. I'll pay for everything. Don't worry. You can also text me right here, 949-298-2905. All this is posted right here. Check it out and uh, reach out to me. Kim Woods is here and uh, we'll be with her in about four minutes. So thank you very much for letting me know you're here. We have been confirmed at Web Summit in Portugal, November 1st and 4th, and Malta in Chicago with, uh, of course, Mike Tyson next week. In Chicago, we'll be doing a meetup in Chicago, New York. Uh, good to see everyone here. All right, the question, whoa, questions are rolling in. <laughs> Got fell behind there a little bit. Uh, very good. Let's see here. Number one, best piece of advice for someone who isn't sure what they want in life. If you don't know what you want, then let's start utilizing the daily practices of knowing your what, knowing your who, who can help you, who you can help, knowing your how to be productive, accessible, and gracious, knowing your now, how to prioritize what you want to do. 100% of the things you do now get done. Difference between passionate, purposeful, and profitable people is they get things done and applying your why. If you want those five daily practices, I will teach them for free, david at dmeltzer.com. I will send you five daily practices. I will send you the core lessons of life. Whatever you want, just email me. It's the easiest way, david at dmeltzer.com. I answer everything myself, uh, so make sure you reach out and uh, we'll do that. Let's see uh, what other questions we have in the house here. Um, how to document your life if you find yourself boring? Well, first of all, nobody is boring. Uh, boring people have not found the light, the love, and the lessons to look inside themselves. Everyone has their own frequency. Uh, so for me, I am boring to most of the world, and there is a small frequency of people that I'm super exciting to. Because uh, there's seven point whatever billion people in the world. And if just 0.001% find me exciting, that's good enough for me. So don't uh, look outside, look inside for what excites you. That's, once again, the purpose of knowing your daily practices. The what, the who, the how, the now, and applying your walk. How to be strong alone. Ask for help, then you won't be alone. Uh, one of the superpowers in life is to ask for help. What do you think about <laughs> Simone Bales and Naomi Osaka putting their mental health first? Um, I think everyone should put their mental health first. I don't know what their situation is. Uh, you know, so I think everyone should put their, their health first. I do. And so, you know, if it's too much stress um, and it's, you know, creating interference between you and your great light and love, uh, it's disappointing as a fan uh, and, you know, to see people having to quit their life dreams because of, you know, mental issues. Uh, things don't happen overnight. Uh, that's my greatest concern. Um, so, uh, you know, where is the process of the mindset training that should be going into these uh, athletes so that when they get to the biggest moments, uh, they don't aggregate effect, right? It works in negative behaviors favor. So, you know, we should be practicing mindset uh, in order to get to where we can handle uh, the biggest stages in the world. Um, and, you know, but put your health first, please, everybody, uh, and understand aggregate effect and compound interest, especially in our mental status. Uh, tough question. I have a concept I've been working on that I want to bring to market. A company wants to bring a similar app to market and has resources and connections, but missing what I believe in the secret sauce. 
Do I go work for them or work on it on my own? Uh, I think the better thing to do is work with them. Uh, so I would uh, approach them and uh, show how you uh, can make yourself equal, but also make yourself distinguishedly valuable to them. And I would work with them, not for them. Uh, and I definitely would approach them uh, to see how exactly you can work with them and uh, both benefit from the nuance or the value or appreciation that you bring. All right, uh, let's bring on Kim Woods. Uh, she can reach back out and tell me you're here. I didn't see you put a request in, but I'm backtracking here to to find uh, you, Kim. And uh, there she is, Kim Woods' channel. We'll get that going on. We are going to talk about her revolutionary true KLT process, um, which is uh, an area which I love to talk about, is which my intuition. How are you? I'm good. How are you, David? Thank you so much for being so timely. It makes my job so easy. <laughs> Thank you so much for hosting me. It makes my job easy. Well, awesome. Well, give me a little bit of background on this true KLT process that you've created. Yeah, basically, we in business, we know that customers need to know, like, and trust you in order for them to want to work with you. But let's turn that inward. You need to know, like, and trust yourself. Because if you don't know, like, and trust yourself, how can others know, like, and trust you? So that's what we do. We turn it internally versus having it being externally faced. Well, I love it because you can't find outside of you what you can't find inside of you. And then looking at the idea, you know, I've been in sales a long time. And, you know, the people that I learned from the Zig Ziglar's, the Dennis Waitley's, the Brian Tracy's, uh, because of social media, have kind of fallen away to, you know, kind of the new rock stars. And I'm trying to transcend uh, the classic solution selling of Mike Bosworth. But the basis of, you know, from Napoleon Hill to Brian Tracy to Dennis Waitley to Zig Ziglar to Jack uh, Canfield has always been the KLT process, right? Right. We know, like, and trust. Um, I think there's also, uh, in looking at how you weave in intuition, uh, there's an energetic component that was missing early on. Uh, in the idea of knowing, liking, and trusting, when we look inside ourselves, we carry a frequency. Uh, and I think credibility is overlooked, self-credibility is overlooked an enormous amount of time. So people tend to project by overselling, back-end selling, lying, manipulating, and cheating, and then wonder why they can't get people to know, like, and trust them. Uh, because the minute they start overselling, back-end selling, lying, manipulating, and cheating, people go down the rabbit hole of trying to find, through skepticism, how I don't want to know you, like you, or trust you, <laughs> even though you may be likable and trustworthy. How do we shift that energy inside? How do we use our intuition to increase our credibility and the emotional attachment that occurs to effectuate you know, this great relationship that provides benefit to both parties? Well, when we use our intuition, we are aligned with our true life purpose and we're aligned with our own energetic signature. And I love how you talk about that. You talk about there's, you know, almost 8 billion people on the planet. But if you're only looking for the people that vibrationally connect to you, there's going to be plenty of people that you can work with, right? It's going to be right. awesome. And so being pure, like going inward and, and going into your heart is what we talk about. As a matter of fact, I'm just doing a challenge now and we're talking about developing your intuition because we don't sit and stop and listen. We're constantly looking externally. There's so much noise out there, David. If we can quiet and just take those pause moments and go in and reflect and go in and connect to our heart and send a signal out with, through our voice and through our messaging and through our connections, then people will find you and people will want to know you a little bit more. And then if you are engaging from a purely, you know, energetically connected space with an open heart, you're going to be really adding value. Like, look at all the value you add, right? Like we add value all the time. You add value and people find you and they say, oh my goodness, I want to work with you. It's so interesting because I have shifted my own paradigm from the old school KLT uh, notion of finding the appropriate avatar to address or to seek uh, in my pipeline. And now I've completely shifted my paradigm to I only look for people with open minds, open hearts and open hands. And I ask them either are you one, are, are you a resistant person? So I first determine are you closed minded or even if you're the perfect avatar? Right. right. If I, I right. was looking for, you know, beautiful ladies with blonde hair and glasses. If you have a closed mind, you're not my target, even though you're a beautiful lady with blonde hair and glasses. And I'm like, 
what do you mean she doesn't want to buy from me? Well, she has a closed mind. But once I find the open-minded, open-hearted, open-handed people, now they either categorize themselves as a sponsor, meaning they must know someone that can help me. Right. Or two, a power sponsor, they themselves can help me and they know someone that can help me. And I think once people can determine, well, just because there's these people that don't know, trust, or like me, even though they should, because I have the perfect solution for them, right. that means you're on frequency. Like right. if you're on frequency, it's gonna be polarizing to the people that are not on your frequency. And that means you're on frequency. Too many people do this like chameleon, and I was one of them, the pleaser chameleon salesperson. Right. It doesn't work. There's no frequency to it. There's, it doesn't work. And it's not sustainable. Our whole thing is about how to be sustainable, right? You want growth. You want to bring things into your life. You know, you want to use the law of attraction. Let's just say it, right? So when you are aligned with your intuition and you're following it, you're attracting your soulmate clients. You just come together easily. And it's, it's you know, it makes your job easier. You're making decisions that are smarter. You're connecting in a beautiful power exchange. You know, we talk about generosity a lot and we talk about that growth and just the energetics of what that amplification is. It's a beautiful thing. And you talked about avatar. We have a quiz that will give you your own avatar because the avatar you're looking for is yours, not somebody else's. So you can go to, I'm just going to say it. I'm going to self-promote right now, David. Sorry about that. But I'm going to say, go to Kim Witt's channel on Insta, click link in bio, and it's the second button. Take the quiz, find out your avatar, and it will make your life a lot easier. Well, I will promote that as well. I think you might see a post from me uh, endorsing you because I love, you'll hear the find your own avatar. Right? right, find who you are, and then learn to love your avatar is the second part of it. If my team's listening, please take a note of find your own avatar and learn to love your own avatar because that is absolute genius. Genius is the expression of God or expression of truth. Uh, and so coming through you, and I want to notate it when it happens. Last thing real quick, you know, I talk about pain, setbacks, mistakes, failures as being the things that propel us to a better place, a better position or a better situation, not punishment. Exactly. And I see, you know, life happening every day and the same or less circumstances happen to others. And I can't get them to seek the light, the love and the lessons to find the better place, the better position to be in. All they see is pain and punishment. I know you as a catalyst in your life uh, had a setback, uh, a family issue that set you into this intuitive state of KLT. Uh, if you wouldn't mind, I'd love for you to finish up by sharing how you turned that uh, struggle into propelling you into a better place, a better situation. Absolutely. It was, you know, my son was born. He was my first child. I was on the fast track. I was doing all the things, right? Success, yay. And um, he had <laughs> health issues. And so the universe was like, Whoosh, right? Gonna knock me right over. And I was, tea kettle like honestly and then I righted myself realizing wait a minute I have intuition I'm a strategist we're going to take his health issues and we're not going to accept the doctor's um you know predictions of he's not going to be able to throw a catch a ball he's not going to be able to walk up the stairs he's not going to have a social life and that was the one I was like oh no he's two years old this is not going to happen and so we in we ended up taking ancient wisdom eastern practices with the western methods and we combined them he is completely fine. He's a, going to be a junior in college. Very typical, you know, 20 year old. Yes, that's the biggest win. But you mean yes and. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? But, but honestly, David, I was like, I want those issues, right? Like, right, I right, right, that, right. that means everything's typical. Yeah, but you know. Um, and then I got, I, a 20 year old. I got a 20 year old. And she is uh, a, a joy of my life. But I, yeah. I, uh, I yeah. oh God, boyfriends by themselves drive me oh. nuts. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. But it was life changing. And that's why we wanted to bring it into the world that ancient wisdom with practical methods, intuition plus business. It's a beautiful marriage. And I just have uh, enjoyed this conversation. I hope others have taken notes. You know, one of the things I'm pressing upon people is how weak our senses are. We assume we can remember, recollect and remind ourselves of these important issues like find your own avatar, love your own avatar and uh, utilize pain, setbacks, failures, mistakes as a propel lint, meaning propelling us to something better, not a punishment. And you're just such an icon for that. Make sure you check out at Kim Wood's channel. She is full of wisdom and help. If you are seeking, I saw someone there, you know, what do I do when I'm stuck? 
reach out to Kim Woods' channel or email me, david at dmeltzer.com. Thank you so much, Kim. Let's do more together. I appreciate Absolutely. your perspective and I learned a lot. So uh, thank you for joining me. I appreciate it. I appreciate you, David. Thank you so much. You got it. Have a great day. You too. All right. Kim is proving it's more good news Wednesday and she brought some more good news. Know your avatar. Love your avatar, as Kim has suggested. The KLT process. Uh, know, love, like, or trust yourself and others will do the same. You will create a frequency of void for the universe to fill. And the great thing about the universe filling our voids is the universe is exact and it happens rapidly and accurately. Email me, david at dmeltzer.com. My text number is below. Feel free to text me. Five daily practices. Know your what, your who, your how, your now, and apply your why. Or I can send you my book, ebook, audio book. I will sign a copy of my book, ship it to you. I'll pay for everything. Don't worry about it. I got you covered. All right, cool. I see uh, Jamie is in the house. And uh, let me find my friend Jamie. Um, Co-founder of Truman Charities, helping local and national charities uh, raise money. There she is. Hi, Hi Jamie. how are you? I'm amazing. How are you? Great. This um, must be more good news Wednesday. I was going to say, this must be more good news Wednesday because I had such a great first guest and now more good news. You're here. So uh, that's awesome. <laughs> oh, good. Give me, give me a little background on Truman Charities. Sure. So I'm co-founder and I'm the podcast host of Truman Charities. And past 11 years, we've raised $1.2 million for various local charities. And we rely a lot upon our generous donors since we don't do anything on consignment. A hundred percent of what we make goes directly to the charity. So my question to you is that we have an upcoming Halloween event and we want to know how to get new sponsors, you know, excited about helping with our event, you know, either with an item, a service or monetary sponsorship. Like what are your thoughts about how to get new sponsors excited? Yeah, well, I would crawl before you walk, before you run. And I think a lot of times when we have product, service, cash, sponsorship opportunities, uh, that we go for the bigger opportunities instead of allowing the person through the credibility of the charity and the emotional attachment to want to do more. Uh, and some people instantaneously want to do more. Uh, and so I think that everybody, it's a very low threshold to hit to have someone donate a product or a service. Uh, it's a very small ask. Uh, mm -hmm. We do it every day. There's so many different things that we could add value to. And then once we get the credibility and emotional attachment, we then can go ahead and uh, attract or ask uh, them, would it be possible for a small sponsorship this year? Or, you know, a big sponsorship, depending on, you know, what you want. But I think, you know, utilizing the transition of interest from stimulating interest by, hey, we have a really low ask and it's a local, you know, I, I deal with uh, local charities, state Great. charities, country charities and world charities. You know, I'm chairman of, of Junior Achievement University, which covers all realms. And oh, wow. I'm chairman, chairman of the, uh, I'm chief chancellor of Junior Achievement University, but uh, I'm chairman of Unstoppable, which is, you know, an international charity. But I have found that local charities are the easiest uh, ask. And so what Truman Charities does, you have so many credible advantages in the ask process. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things too, I would train you and your volunteers, uh, which I've learned uh, from raising millions and millions of dollars uh, in char yes, I charitable, <laughs> is you, you, too many times we practice the ask or we train people on the ask and right. they're very limited in, in who they ask. For me, I teach the callback. Okay. Um, because 80% of the people don't call you back, email you back, DM you back. And if I can get all of my volunteers, all of the people in the institutions that I'm supporting to get people to call them back, mm -hmm. uh, especially for a charitable purpose or a cause, the statistical success goes up exponentially. Imagine if 80% of the people don't get back to you and you can have everybody increase that 10%. Wow, what it would, how it would affect, it's huge. And yeah. if you can get them, and I can get people uh, through training and I, I'll be happy to send you, I have a callback uh, document to teach people how to get people to call you back and how it. important it is to understand just, 
look, when you call someone, there's only two things that can happen. They can answer or they don't. And what to do when they do answer and what to do when more importantly, 80% of the time they don't answer. So I'll, if you email me, david at dmelter.com or anyone out there want the callback uh, exercise, I'll g- give that to everybody. You can use it in your institution. I promise you it will increase the statistical success to get people to call you back and then crawl before you walk, before you run, get the credibility and the emotional attachment first, and then increase the ask as they're more and more engaged. And your you know, 1.2 million will turn to 2.4, or 4.8, 9.6 million cool. before you know it. Does that sound fair? Thank you so much. That was amazing advice. Thank you. That makes so much sense. Well, email me and you're amazing. And I just want to say how much I appreciate the service. Uh, I have a saying, be kind to your future self and do good deeds. Uh, Your future self will be very happy with what you're doing. So I appreciate it. Oh, thank you so much. You got it. (laughs) Have a good. Thank you. Bye. Awesome. There we go. Truman Charities. Check them out. Support them. Jamie Truman, Truman Charities, uh, and uh, they will support over the past 11 years uh, local charities. So please reach out, support them um, with an item of service or some cash sponsorship, whatever you can do. Be kind to your future self and do good deeds. Uh, all right, where are we rocking and rolling here? We got a few minutes before I bring Brian on. I see Brian is here. Thank you for being on time, Brian. Uh, we're going to talk about the Salem team uh, and what you do. Uh, talk about competitiveness and being the best at what you do, pursuing your potential. Brian knows about that and providing that. What is the best way to deal with ego? Uh, so first of all, ego edges good ed, edges goodness out of our, our lives. E-G-O, edges goodness in gold. Uh, ego is not your amigo. Um, <laughs> by the way, there you go, Patrick. Thank you. I'm representing today, excited about uh, going up to SoFi, and uh, we've got a new office podcast studio and suite up there at SoFi. We are so excited. Uh, that's a new stadium for the Chargers and the Rams, um, but I digress. Uh, the ego, what we want to do is, one, identify it. Most people don't understand the ego. The ego is the interference between you and the greatest source of power, the greatest source of light, the greatest source of lessons and love. And what we do with the ego is we create interference with needs that trigger the primal fears that we have, uh, the need to uh, fight, flee, feed, or, of course, the other F word that Gary B., my buddy, always talks about. Uh, but what are these triggers? You know, the need to be right. Do you have the need to be right? Do you ever have the need to be offended, the need to be separate from, inferior to, superior of? Do you have a need to be anxious, frustrated, angry? Do you ever worry? Worrying is wishing for what you want and wishing for what you don't want. It's one of the greatest creators of interference ever. I can show you how to stop, drop, and roll because when you're in ego-based consciousness, consciousness, your mind, your body, and soul are on fire. And how do we, And what do we do when we're on fire? We stop, identify why we're on fire, drop down to center to neutral, and then roll in the trajectory of our five daily practices, roll towards our what, our who can help us and who we can help, our how, productivity, accessibility, and gratitude, our now prioritizing appropriately what, who, and how we want to get it done, and of course, applying our why with less interference, not more. Ego is not your amigo. It edges goodness out of your life. It creates interference to the greatest source of light, love, and lessons. You can do it. We need to identify those needs, though. The need to be right, offended, separate, inferior, superior, anxious, frustrated, angry, guilty, resentful. All of these feelings we need to identify because that will create the interference, which is the fastest way to reach out to DM or email. Uh, I like email, but you can DM me. I check those as well. I just check my emails a little bit more often. I do check them daily. So david at dmeltzer.com or at David Meltzer, whatever you need, the five daily practices, the template of uh, getting people to call you back, whatever it is, please reach out to me. Uh, We will teach you to learn to love your avatar. All right, I'm going to bring on Brian Salem and uh, Brian (laughs) Salem. How perfect is he? Uh, He's one of the top real estate agents in the country. Uh, And so I wanted to have him in to talk about how to become a top producer in whatever you do. And uh, 
uh, what a perfect name, Brian Selim. <laughs> That's so good. That's so good. Ego is what people carry when they don't build their brains and emotional intelligence. Hey, Brian. Hey, David. How are you? <laughs> it's so good, man. I was just <laughs> appreciating your name. Uh, you yeah. know, certain names that are just born into you. My my name means beloved servant, and so I think I was born into my name. Uh, you absolutely were born into yours, Brian Selim, because nobody's absolutely. selling nobody's selling them like you are, buddy. Congratulations <laughs> on all your success. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, I was, I, you know, I I have uh, been a fairly successful salesperson in my uh, own own career, and I believe there's a lot of math that I apply to being productive, accessible, gracious, and, and successful. And you are one of the country's top producers. And, you know, there's, I don't even know how many real estate agents there are. So right. in, a, in a very, very crowded space, let's just put it yeah. that way. With they limited say point, inventory right now. Um, yeah. What are some of the math tricks that you've learned? You know, whether it's time, in productivity, efficiency, what are some of the statistical right. things that you do that people can take away from this IG and say, oh, you know what, because I, I know there, there's some innate ability to sell, but then there's some pragmatic things that you do. I was hoping that you could share a few of the math tricks that you use uh, to be so productive. Oh, yeah. Well, some of the, to me, some of the simple math tricks are uh, formatting how many contacts I want to make a day. Uh, mm -hmm. That's some of the real simple math. And, and I break things down to some simplicity. Uh, a contact comes in multitude of ways. You can do it. It's just connecting with people. Um, you could be at a, um, the Starbucks down the street and you connect with somebody, you're making a contact. But it's really how you make those contacts. Now, I could, I could be doing in my business where I'm uh, reaching people on the phone, whether it's warm calls, we do door knocking. Um, but you're making contacts with people, so you simplify it into mathematics where you say, how many people do I have to connect with in order to, you know, break it down? You go, the contacts, the leads to the actual sales. And when you start off with that, it's a very simplistic. I could break down where anybody could be successful on a simplistic level. The problem is the execution. And like you've said so many times, it's the mindset and all these other elements that can get in the way of that simplicity. But if you want to know how many people you connect with in order to formulate uh, benefiting them, it's like the way I say it, to benefit them, uh, not just make a sale, but benefit somebody, the more people you help and, and uh, can uh, do the things that you are meant to be doing as a success, um, then it's real simple. So that's what I do. I just break it down. Like I, I even have charts for me. This is one of my uh, sheets. I just simply break it down checkbox the areas and and things flow uh from there but that's the simplistic basics thing uh i i could give you a specific number i do try to bring it to 50 a day contacts uh and and that's how it flows from there and then there's a lot of other elements that come from it but simplistically that's it you know i do a lot of coaching and i have real estate agents and uh one of the things that i've been doing with real estate agents with marshall falk is <laughs> giving extra sources of, of income as well. So I'd, I'd love to follow up with you and see if you'd be interested in joining my and Marshall Falk's team and providing some, you know, extra financial literacy uh, to the agents and to others, but also extra income. But one of the things that's so interesting is, you know, you're at the top of the game. Mm -hmm. And yet, like me, seven days a week, I ask people in person, on the phone, via email and social media. I, mm -hmm. I, I'm a door knocker myself, and I, I had a kid that I coached, and he was literally bankrupt, and he said, Dave, I'm going to make a million dollars a year. I said, well, how many? We, we live in Southern California, so I said, how many properties would you have to sell to make a million dollars? And he came up with that number, and it's ironic because I said, okay, you need to go knock on 50 doors. But what he didn't realize today, you know, he's one of the top producers in the country, uh, what he didn't realize is the aggregate effect, especially in real estate. So not only... You know, are you aggregating the 50 and 50 and 50, seven days a week, you know, 1,400 people a month? But as you get more business, you know, three listings a month, I think we came to to, to make a million dollars a year. But you do a good job to those three listings. Now right. you get this exponential effect that not only are you still asking 50, but those, uh, you know, three people a month, 36 people a year, after 10 years, you got 360 people that are out there going, oh, you got to use Brian, you know, right. you got, and then it's more. And so it gets easier, not harder. And yet some people get less motivated 
to knock on doors when the success comes, when that's right. when you really should lean in and really experience the aggregate or exponential effect so you could be one of the top producers in the country. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I just talked to a colleague the other day about that very fact. They have a lot of business coming, and I said, you, you know, be careful because you're going to fall off. You're going to feel in a comfort zone. And when you get to the place in your life, because, um, you know, I'm in a place where what I do is to bring success to other people, to benefit other people with what my knowledge is. And I, you know, I just have that belief system that when you're working with me, you're going to get such a benefit because there's so many elements to what we do uh, that could, you know, either lead to a bad result or an incredibly great result for a lot of reasons. And so when you come at things in a manner that you're, you're, you're continuing to want, I love the words that you use on, on a higher level, on a higher mental and spiritual level, that you bring value to people. And the more you bring value to people, the better everyone is. The better everything is. You expand the marketplace in your business. You give the business a better name. Everything expands. And if you have come from that, you're drawn from that energy you're drawn to do more it's not so much all right i've got enough here and now i'm going to sit back it's you're going to continue to pump out that great energy to people and achieve great results for them and and so th those are things that i think are important like you mentioned earlier on uh you were talking about people's mindset and then also knowing your value i always say that when i do my own little seminars for people it is finding your value proposition is so important to know your value because everyone as you mentioned earlier has their own unique value I have different skill sets. No matter how long I've been doing this, no matter what the level is, somebody coming into the business tomorrow is going to have a different skill set. They're going to bring other things to the table, and they need to know that. When you can capture what your value is, as you said, you're going to draw the people who will respect that, what you bring to the table, because you don't really want to do business with people who don't respect your value. you know, you got to move away from that. When you understand that, your value proposition, things open up. Uh, you, you know, within yourself and your whole process of doing business becomes a pleasure. It's so true. And, you know, you remind me of one of my other friends, Ryan Serhan, uh, you know, who grinds every day, he asks every day, but he understands, you know, the value after he gets uh, the listing or the client. He understands even more importantly, when he has a deal that is in agreement that he's only 20% done he has 80% of the work to do right. even after right. agreement, which is, you know, so critical. One of the other things that he talks about is, you know, people don't want to be sold, especially in real estate. This is probably the biggest purchase of 99% of the people in America's life will be the real estate purchase that they make. And they don't want to be sold. They want to go shopping with a friend. Right. And everybody knows at least five real estate agents. Yeah. <laughs> right. And, and no more. You, you just don't, they don't know that they're real estate agents, but there are even more with licenses out there. But go ahead. Right. Exactly. <laughs> um, but moreover, we choose the person to go shopping with uh, or to sell with. Uh, and we have to have that emotional attachment to finish up. You know, obviously, Ryan is the king and master of emotional attachment. You obviously know and are an expert in it as well for the productivity that you have. What do you look for to have that emotional attachment beyond the credibility, the grinding, the math, you know, the skill sets that you have? There's there's this KLT that we talked about earlier with Kim that people know, like, and trust you. There's an emotional attachment that, hey, you know what? I like to go shopping with Brian or I want Brian to take care of selling my most valuable asset for me. Right. Well, you know, to me, that for me, that emotional attachment is, uh, you know, uh, the the way I come across, I'm kind of... Uh, uh, the honesty in things, you know, being very honest with people about things. But you know what? One of the first things you want to think about when you're working with anybody is the question being answered. How can I help you? And listening to that, because when you understand how somebody wants your help, because you might think what you're going to do is going to be helpful. But if you haven't heard how they need help, because different people need help in different ways. I've got people who have other sophistications and other levels. Others are very nervous. They've not been through the process. So when you learn what their needs are and how I could help you, I'm telling you, in any sales business, that's the first thing you should be asking and listen. And then when you've heard that, then being honest and direct and being very forthright with the whole process or how you operate or what you're going to do, 
I, I think that's how I connect with people. I grew up in New Jersey. I've been living out here in California for the majority of my life. But, uh, you know, it's a very straightforward. It's a certain way I come at things that I think people connect with very well. And other people, you know, like you said, there's going to be different uh, connections with different people. I, I happen to be someone who's very straightforward with the people and come to them with the direction of where my value is that I could help in those areas. And I think when, when those connections come, then, then the business just flows and everything flows well. The process is good. You're, you're going to enjoy your business, your life. <laughs> your life is going to open up uh, because you're working in, in areas that just really – uh, make you want to continue to do more. And that's where you bring value to everything that you're touching. I love it. It's so smart. You know, I teach people, I have a template that talks about asking people open-ended questions of what they're doing today, what they're thinking about today with their real estate, what they like about it, what they don't like about it. And then mm -hmm. asking with closed-ended questions, hey, would it help you if I did this? Would it help right. you if I did this? Or can you see any reason it wouldn't help you? And moreover, do you know anyone that could help me? You know, I'm looking to represent people in the purchase or the sale of their property, quite simply what I do. Um, so you do that so well. Your name yeah. says it all, Brian Sellum. <laughs> Keep on selling them, my friend, yeah. here in Southern. Please reach out to me, though. I have some uh, big ideas of how you and I can help people make money Absolutely. and have fun together. If you're a Marshall Falk fan, it'll be even more fun for you because we've, we've been yeah. killing it in the real estate space helping guys like you. So thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Would love to. Love to. We'll be in touch. You thank got you, it. Dave. Thanks, Brian. Check him out at the Selim team. Uh, if you have real estate, these are the kind of people that you want to do business with, uh, with your biggest purchase or sale in your life, which is usually your real estate. Uh, Brian Selim, showing him another guy who comes from the Ryan Serhan story of being of service and of value to others. Oh boy, we are KLT processed out today. I'm gonna to take another question. It is more good news Wednesday. Uh, if you want any of these documents or my books, um, then you should reach out to me, david at dmelcher.com. If you wanna join my financial literacy team, david at dmelcher.com. If you're looking for a new career uh, in our grinder, david at dmelcher.com, reach out to me, I will help you. Don't worry, I won't charge you anything. Just, it's more good news Wednesday. Free help. It's all free. It's available, it's available for everyone. <laughs> what do you look for in, a, in mentorship? Uh, well, I look for someone simply that sits in the situation that I want to be in and I ask them for help. Easiest way to get to where I want to be is to find someone that's already there and ask them for directions. It's that simple. Hi, Maddie. Good to see you. All right, everyone. It's more good news Wednesday. We got a lot going on. So reach out to me, david at dmelcher.com, books, the templates that I talked about, or if you want to transition and work within the financial literacy space, looking for a good opportunity to make money, help people and have fun, reach out, david at dmelcher.com. My text number is right here, pinned below with my email. Use it or DM me, that's easy as well. Thank you, everybody. Most importantly, it's more Good News Wednesday. Remember, be kind to your future self and do good deeds. We'll see you tomorrow. Thank you.